Boom. This is Howie Mandel does stuff. This is Howie Mandel. And I'm Jacqueline Schultz, his daughter. And what a great day. We have a great guest, Tim Heidecker. You know, from Tim and Eric. Tim and Eric did some of my favorite. Um, you can come in. Tim, I saw you look in, and then I'm, I'm just talking about you, and, and then you what didn't. Mess. Oh, and, the, and these guys are your. Uh, who, who, who are you with, Tim? Well, hey, this is uh, DJ Doug Pound to my right. And, DJ uh, Doug Pound, Doug Loosenhop. Okay, Doug Pound. Doug Pound. Right. Okay. And then Vic Berger the Fourth. Hello. Dick Berger the Fourth. Vic. No. Vic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could call me Dick if you have to. Yeah, Vic the Fourth. Yeah, Vic the Fourth. So I'm the. You're yeah. the third person that he's in. Out of the three of you, you're I, the fourth. I'm the fourth. I I, I count as both. I guess. Mm -hmm. And I, I should mention that we are actually starting this podcast uh, five minutes later than we usually do. Who was on time? Um, who I'm not talking to you. I was on time. I was on time. I was on time. I was on time, more or less. I was five, ten minutes early. That's not on time. That's early. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. So these uh, your crew. Do you have a microphone? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna smile and sit here. You can talk. Just talk loud. Just no, don't, don't move it. You don't no, move okay. it. Don't, don't move it. We're, we're uh, bringing him in. Caroline is coming in with a mic. Caroline a will give you a laugh. Oh, I want one of those. Oh, look at that. Oh, special. So, uh, Tim, yes, first sir. of all, we were so excited to have you here. We didn't know the you other guys. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited to uh, yeah, was, to just it, find out who these other two right. guys are. Yeah, I was the one who was booked originally, by the way. All right. <laughs> were you? Yes. <laughs> and that was a late one. I showed up late. I made the Caroline, he, you booked him? Yeah. Yes. She's saying yes. Okay. But and I'm then the you get. brought Tim? Kind of, I'm the guest. I should kind of be there, but I'll let you. Like, he's uh, he's upset because he's not on. Well, you are. No, you're, you're a special. Mic. You're wearing your I'm own like, mic. You're in the middle. You have the special spot. Oh, I thought it was like the closer one, kind of Johnny Carson style. Okay, brought it to a screeching halt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a huge uh, and have been for a long time uh, Tim and Eric fan. Thank you. I am, and um, I'm also a, a little perturbed because uh, for the longest time, you use a lot of people. Indeed. Used you? I, that's a that's a, worked with, collaborated. Kind of word <laughs> use a lot of people that I, I think like. I know we you're collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I've never we've never worked together. No. Is that what you're getting at? Do you not like him? <laughs> I respect him. Yeah, but you don't like me. <laughs> and you didn't want to work with. Him. <laughs> no, it is weird. There's a, there's I mean there there are people I would think I th I've thought about this uh, who we love and then don't end up using for various using. Various yeah. Uh, see, now you got it in my head, but <laughs> one good example of the great Jack Black. Right. Never could figure out a way, well, I love him and think he's extremely talented. What? He was Bear, in- Bear Trash. He was in like the first, first, first thing we ever did. So but that doesn't- the fact you're, not that here you're, to, saying, you're not here to contradict me. <laughs> he was the one I booked. You're not fact checking. <laughs> he's, the one I, he's the one we booked and that's why we booked him. Because he knows. Sir, first of all, Eric and I weren't when we found when you reached out to us. I yeah. forget what the context was. But I was trying to work with you. Yeah, yeah. We were just kind of not very active at the time doing stuff. If we knew this Good when point. we were making Awesome Show, you would have been in like all that. You would. Have been I watched everything. every Awesome Show. The, the the thing, and you look different now. People are listening to this, but you lost a lot of weight. I lost two hundred and fifty pounds. Wow. wow. Oh, you did. Yeah, I was a, <laughs> I love it. It's an absurd number. <laughs> no, but you could have, right? You could lose could 10 have, pounds. You could do anything. Because, uh, no, no, because you, you, put, you put 10 pounds on. Uh, you take 10 pounds off. Then you put back five. Then you lose another 10 pounds. And you gain seven again. But you're not... You don't add up whatever you... I'll put it you, to you this way. If I lost 250 pounds, you wouldn't be minus here. Minus 50 pounds. Dude, wow. I love that you see that this is not just a podcast. People have to do math yeah. and to figure out what the jokes are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love that. But you look you look good. Well, you look, thank you. What's the biggest you're ever up to, Tim? What's that? What's that? What's the biggest you're ever up to, like, weight wise? <laughs> what's the biggest yeah, I was biggest. ever up to? I'm Highest know. number. I mean, we waited like twenty minutes for you guys to find the fucking building. <laughs> That's the biggest weight. <laughs> Let me just say, you know, like when I knew when I, when I knew I had to go to the dentist, it was two thirty. <laughs> <In my, wait. laughs> 
Are you are you a wordplay guy? Are you like a pun guy? Not I love puns. Yeah, I'm like these Dad guys are the, well. Doug is Doug. Doug, 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 Doug Vic is along. So I'm right. along for the ride. So let I mean, me can I explain who these do guys? Please, please explain. I don't yeah. really know. In, in, in but your guys, you're, you're the people around here are wearing t-shirts with my face on it. We'll know. Well, but first of they all, they should be I doing wonder. a better job of educating you. Well, the point is that I didn't even know. I was excited that you were here, and I then mean, the staff and other people who aren't even staff. We don't usually do our podcast in front of a live audience. Are wearing uh, Tim Heidecker hats, apparel, and, <laughs> apparel. Wow. That's uh, guests don't usually come on and sell merch. I did, I, I, did, I didn't bring any merch to sell. <laughs> well, apparently you're so, sold out because they're all wearing it here. Well, let me ex briefly explain who's sitting next to me. Okay. Doug Lucenhop, DJ Doug Pound, Doug Lucenhop. One of the reasons you love our work so much is this guy because he's. The editor and a lot and writes a lot of stuff. So all the oh. editing, all the crazy psychedelic, crazy editing, is starts with him. Right, Doug should be at him. the end of the. Then no, that's yeah, amazing. That's Thanks, why Dan. you booked him. So he's a big part of that. I love your of stuff. Course, behind, without knowing behind the scenes, of course, the board. with and off the mic. supervision, <laughs> I should say, <laughs> with mild notes, which I take or I don't. Uh, and then, and and Vic. Uh, is a little bit newer to the scene, but uh, people will have seen his videos online. He's made tons of uh, uh, tons Jim Baker, yeah. the Jim Baker uh, edits of the buckets were Jim Baker. <laughs> Remember right, Jim Baker? Too. I don't know what would. <laughs> Let's you play it. What is it under? <laughs> it's Vic Burger. Yeah. yeah just, okay. Put up a Vic Burger video. You'll immediately Vic Burger, realize or what, uh, on what Vice News too. You get to put in uh, the V I C Burger. Yeah. yeah. And then, but to You're wrap this up, to just Vic? to wrap this up because I do have to go. The <laughs> two of us, the three of us, do a similar sort of podcast uh, every Thursday live. We this isn't live, but we do it every Thursday called Office Hours Live. So it's, which one of these guys plays your daughter? Uh, my daughter comes on the show occasionally. I have this five, is my, you know, I've, this is my daughter. Yes, I've, I, we, we were introduced. What's yeah. your name? Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Yes. My daughter, Amelia, is uh, eight. Okay. So she sometimes comes on as well. But, really? Yeah. And uh, so what let's is just, this? I want to watch this. Oh, this uh, is country. This is not the best, not the best reference. Okay, so the, okay. Try, but it's only 20 yeah. seconds, so maybe yeah, it is. Yeah, maybe it is, yeah. You, uh, <laughs> Vic, it's hard to explain. Vic is re it is hard, hard to explain. explain. He takes footage and re-edits it into a new right, I did, work of art. Right, I take a lot, like a lot of Watch uh, uh, Donald, Is footage. Donald Trump the least racist person you've ever met? That's maybe a good one. There's probably, yeah, I don't know. Oh, we're getting political. Well, I hope everybody will join me. Whoa, there's a give you an ad for him on these. Get out of here. Yeah. You guys got to start paying for you YouTube. Can't, you <laughs> the African-American like, over here. Look at him. You know what I'm talking so. about? I am the least racist person you have ever interviewed. That I can tell you. I am the least racist person that you have ever met. I am the least racist person. You've been labeled a racist. How, how do you respond to that? <laughs> Uh, I am the least racist person you've ever met. Are you racist? I just want to no, ask you. I am not. I don't have a racist bone in my body. I have not got a racist bone in my body, and I think you know that too. <laughs> no, no, I'm not a racist. Blacks for Trump. I like those sides. Blacks for Trump. We did not want the King holiday just to be a day of hero worship. As a matter of fact, at the King Center, we refer to it as a day on, not a day off. It's not a day to hang out in the park or pull out the barbecue grill. It's a day yeah. to do so, something to I mean, what, you have that. What Vic does is, is, is what he did on. He, yeah. he finds the the DNA of the insanity and the psychosis of all this shit. Wow. Finds and and dial and shows it to us the way. He's yeah. Well, what's out. amazing is that. You know, you, both of you guys, you do, uh, I didn't know who you were, you know, but yeah. but I know that you create, the edits are, so maybe I don't like Tim and Eric. Maybe yeah. I just like <laughs> what you do. You're coming empty around, vessels. that's that's we're why we're here. Maybe I just like what you do with yeah. the shit that they do. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, we've, I mean, we've, that, that was kind of our joke is that oftentimes we'll go down into the studio like you guys have here right. and fuck around for, you know, 20 minutes and I like, give it to Doug, he'll find something funny about that. I don't know. That is amazing. He'll shine our shit. He'll Can we shine curse our... on this, or are you guys trying to stay away from that? Um, the only word, uh, we don't want any word but cunt. Cunt. Oh. I knew it. Cunt. Is cunt is the only word that we, we allow. I, I look forward to the day when I could say uh, that word in front of my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you can now. You can. Really? Why? Yeah, you Why are you can. saying that? You can. I can. You no could. one's stopping you. you. My daughter is funny because she uh, she scolds me when I curse, and I, I do curse. 
but she's very sensitive to Jesus Christ. We're not a Christian, like I grew up Catholic, but we're not raising our kids in a, in a church or anything. Why not? You know, we were talking about a different <laughs> C word. Yes, I know you are. I'm just, I changed it. I went a different direction, but uh, she's like, I don't like when you say Jesus Christ. That's very disrespectful because she's, she's picking up on the Lord somehow from some other source. <laughs> she's becoming like Lord independently himself? Christian. Wow. Kind of cool. Yeah, Maybe something a, about that makes her... Find it your own way. Yeah, it's like her right. way of rebellion. Wow. She, mm. Yeah. Is there any way that you can edit this conversation so that it makes sense to me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're kind of like speaking as Why you code. Dumb cunt, talk right. Nice. So yeah. how he understands. <laughs> yes. The cunt word I've talked about before is my son. When my son was your daughter's age, when he was eight, mm. he said something. I, I, outside of the podcast and in real life, I, I was uh, much more conservative as a as a parent. And I, I think my, my son said the F word mm -hmm. and I told him he can't use that word. Number one, because it's disrespectful. Number two, uh, because you don't even know what these words mean. And he right. said, I know what all the words mean. I said, you know what all the, he goes, I know the worst word. I said, what is the worst word? And he said, what girls don't want to be called, you know, that, that part. And he was pointing at his crotch. I go, you could say, tell me what you think it is. And he goes, you know, the K word. <laughs> and my wife was mad at me because I never corrected him. And to this day, he's sitting he right here. It. He's here. He thinks that cunt is spelled with a K. Alex. <laughs> spell that's, him in the hat? Spell, that's him in the hat. Spell cunt, Alex. K U N T. Don't tell him. K E N T. K E N T. Oh, you didn't hear that. Tim just no, realized he's not wearing yeah. headsets. So you, uh... I'm, now when I put the headset on, I be, I'm going to become much more guarded. Because I, like, I have an under, I have a uh, sort of a internal understanding that this is this is a recording. When you take it off, we're just talking. We're just off. Right. Then Should I take mine off too? Do I? I've Did never you put the microphones it? away or something. Know, that, huh? Turn the microphones <laughs> off. Turn it all off. Yeah. 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 So yeah, do these we, guys? So the, <laughs> as, can we just, just turn hang off out? The lights. What is the name of your podcast? Office hours live. Office hours live with Tim Heidecker. That's the full. <laughs> oh, really? he edited it, <laughs> and then you put it back on. Yeah. Featuring the whole it's show. just your Office name. It's hours. just your name on there. Well, you saw how well, I knew that. We're now known as the we're known as the Holy Trinity. Yeah. S speaking again, of but back on the podcast, and you're wondering where your daughter right. gets Look, her. There it is. The there website's we up Look and at that running. Beautiful website. So we've had yeah. almost 200 episodes. We had Natasha Leone on last week. Is that how she likes her name pronounced? Leone. Am I, I said Leon, and no, I think it's she corrected me. No, it's it's Natasha. Oh, Natasha. <laughs> oh, the first okay. one, yeah. Natasha. Yeah, and you do. You, uh, what's the? It's a lot of fun. So we started it. I started oh, about yeah. five or six years ago, out of the uh, absolutely offices. Right. Just you know, embracing new technology, seeing that you could just kind of jump on. I think it was Facebook Live at the time. You can just go live on these devices and connect with your audience. So I started doing that just for just for fun, just to kill time in the in the morning. With these two. No, not with these two. And then they came in, Vic came in, or Doug came in first and started doing little sound drops and little... That's my role is... that. Well, that's both of our role. Well, we also speak, but we are doing... Uh, you know Fred from the effects. Howard Stern show? Yeah, you like, know, yeah, I understand like, sound drops. Yeah, I, I yeah, know yeah. what they are. Yeah. Are you going to be doing any today? It. Well, uh, like what he's... Have, a, I didn't know. It was possible. No, but uh, just verbally or just... Oh, yeah, we can <laughs> shout him out. If you want. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> And then, <laughs> wow, you guys are so, so amazing. Yeah. Amazing. How did you come up with that? I just I was working on it on the way here. I was like, I'll try it out. Well, you had a lot of time on yeah, the way yeah, here. I yeah. a lot of time. <laughs> the, the, the thing that you don't know, so they were lost. Uh -huh. And then uh, we, I'm not going to give out our address, but we have an address. And then uh, Tim calls them and says, where are you guys? It's like, and they say they're at this address. <laughs> it's and not our we, fault. Well, wait, it's not and then, our fault. <laughs> they, they say they're at this address, and we're standing out front. So now we think one of the cars out front. We then I hear him say, "What, what car are you in?" Mm -hmm. So we're looking for car. What do you mean it's not your fault? Did somebody send you drive we instead of Avenue? We got this professional calendar, and it mm -hmm. says, "Do you want to have this address?" You click on that. And it's the wait. Kind of you got a professional like, calendar? <laughs> well, it, got, it, it was like in a in, calendar. It was in, an official well, Matson, like event, yeah, right? Yeah, it was like happen. Yeah, and uh, there's you know how some streets are placed and some of them are Ave. It was one of those drives. Things. And, Avs, and somebody sent place. us to the place, the wrong place. Drive. Ave. Is it somebody from us? 
Yeah, it would be. We got to no, no. we got to go up the chain and figure it, out where the hell yeah, it started. It's, no it's disrespect. Caroline. No disrespect. <laughs> I clicked on that same link and, and came here beautifully, perfectly in fact. <laughs> perfectly. Yeah, they all had the same link. They all had a professional calendar. <laughs> yes. Yeah, One link, found the place. Same phone, same technology, same iPhone. And you came in three separate cars, perfectly. right? Yeah. I yeah. think you did it to set us back so you can dunk on us and get here first. <laughs> so, like, well, you know, for these right. talk shows, you need something. I think you, you wanted that number chunk. one spot. <laughs> so you're like, I got to get there first. I'll sit anywhere you want. So, Tim and Eric, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, are you doing more stuff? Not right now. Uh, we do, co we, do uh, we direct commercials together for, right. you know, for the cash. Um, is there a commercial running right now that is a Tim and Eric directed commercial? Because I, I watch commercials and they, they don't, I never stay around for the credits. No. <laughs> <laughs> is there a commercial right now? That... I don't know if there is. I don't, I don't remember. Yeah, you do. I don't. Uh, there's a potentially, there's a uh, Alaska Airlines commercial that we did last it, year that I, might be still running. I Once we're done, I don't look back and keep track. Are you in the commercial? No, no. And you just direct them? Just direct them, yeah. And are they in that Tim and Eric style? I would say that the the companies that hire us want like a a little like a more corporate a little they want they less just want like a touch a touch of that they want a taste of that like a very serious so, commercial with a bad wig yeah yeah <laughs> uh, or just a little flavor of weird but you know um, the but, weirdness is what the, I love the creative side the real stuff you know we we went on tour in 2020. We did a show called Beef House. Which, Wait, in 20? Well, during the, COVID? Sorry, January and February and very early March of 2020, we were all over the world spreading the disease. Wow. <laughs> per, that's, that's where it started. Per uh, Fauci's request. <laughs> wow. Yeah. People I shouldn't don't know say that. that. I mean, I shouldn't get into this now, but it's... It's true. Yeah. <laughs> People don't know that. No. This is an exclusive because you haven't spoken publicly about this before. 2019, Thanksgiving. Fauci 2019, it, right? Fauci came to us and said, we have a disease we need you to spread. How can you do it? I said, we can go on tour. Mm -hmm. That's what we you. did. Little vials. We were given little vials and put it in the... The smoke machine, right? In the street. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you had that big smoke machine. It's a good finale. way to distribute are you? Are you... Are you making that up? I or? am making it up, sir. Yes. Oh. Um, <laughs> you should have just, you shouldn't have even asked. Being as my father would say, facetious. <laughs> you shouldn't have asked. I want to see the comments and how many people just take that and run well, away. Well, how do you know he's not lying? Yeah. How do you know he's that not lying? You said it was yeah, a joke. no, you're right. But wait. It might have been true. So then we, we also made this show called Beef House, which ran on Adult Swim. And, uh, you know, for, for various reasons, it was sort of like a one and done season. Um, I like the line that we got from Adult Swim was, um, we like it, we don't need it. <laughs> Have you ever been told anything like that? Where you would go, okay. My wife I guess once I'll just said that. Fuck myself. <laughs> my wife once said that about my penis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, Jackie? Uh -huh. um, <laughs> um, so we're taking a little break, but then we were, we're writing things and talking and having lunches and trying to figure out what we're going to do next. But, you know, we're also. Tired know, of each other? Tired of, uh, not tired of each other, but we got other, Eric's very into the food scene, if you're it's familiar with, if he's, yeah. he's got a cookbook out and he's going, always going out to eat. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm, you don't eat. And I, I, I Look only, at it, that's why you lost weight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, Eric's left. He's like, where do you, let's, let's get together and work. Is that, can, does, can we do it without eating? He goes, no, we can't. So that's it. We're in an impasse. I'm no. putting out a, a chewing book. Some people, <laughs> some people show you how to cook it. I show I'm how very to into it. gum right now. <laughs> Different slices like and gum. cuts. Oh, mm -hmm. chewing. Chewing gum. Not cooking. It's the next It's the next yeah, step. Yeah, there's different styles of how to cut and how to put it in your mouth. There's different food preparation. Spoons, and then forks, all that stuff. And I, when I will like, that be You know, out? I think what we don't ever talk about when it comes to food is I love food. I love eating food. But it immediately turns to shit. No one talks about Not it. corn. Mm -hmm. Not corn. <laughs> <laughs> Or gum. We found out gum? why. If you swallow gum, keep right? swallowing gum and you find gum in your logs. <laughs> Is that true? If you swallow gum, does it well, still come out gum? Wives tell that it stays. It stays, stays in your. Seven no, years. it goes through. No, no. I once swallowed a piece of gum. It got right to the edge of my anus, and then my anus began to chew. 
And, <laughs> and it wouldn't spit it out. And I go, well, spit yeah, it out. Yeah, spit it out. Get a bubble going. Big bubble butt down there. <laughs> bubble now butt. you're going, that's just stupid. Yeah. That's, why, would you go, why would you take it to that's that? That's too weird. Okay. What is well, wrong with you? Know. Well, that's when he, yes, yeah. he yes ands everything. Mm-hmm. He, he thinks everything I guess he's not editing today. No, he's not. He's got diarrhea of the mouth. But you can't really chew gum with your ass. I mean, <laughs> I was loving that visual and where you're going with it. So, I but you know, I was just making that up. That like I didn't, I didn't. Oh, it didn't really? happen. Okay. Can I ask? What Some is people... this big thing? It's a screen. that is my penis. <laughs> For those that are listening and not that watching, that top, the top of your head there does look a little phallic, doesn't it? <laughs> no, I think he's pointing at the. We have a a. a like a video wall? Yeah, video wall. Yeah. How do you it's not know this video wall? I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I want these that. things in my yeah. life, but I don't have. I don't know. I can't afford them, and they're not, there's no room for them. Have you but guys want, not made a fortune? I keep it all to myself. I keep it. They I keep that it. money for myself. You, you've never it seen my, it, but I, I I find it fascinating with the amount of television you've done, the yeah. amount of directing you've it done. It just seems unique. It, it just seems to, to, in this space. Like I've seen it at you know outside stadiums. It's not even a good screen. It's kind of like. Why are you low... knocking my screen? I mean, it's like pixelated. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's stuff. also. Yeah, I don't even know if I want it now. I might be taking this back. <laughs> it's pixelated and it's like a bunch of screens put together. And it doesn't oh, seem like yeah, it's it being is. used functionally for the show yeah. in a way. It's <laughs> well, I mean, off tamer. We, we all watch <laughs> the video. What are we doing? Yeah. We're looking. Yeah. Online like you could put together. a nice Samsung up there on that TV, a nice <laughs> from Target for a thousand bucks, and then you'd be happy. But this thing, it's just too big. Now, or like a now projector, sort of, now I sort or of a hate projector, it. or a projector. Yeah, I you just cut it. the sides off too. If you think about it, it's Look a at, like, terrible M. way. Heidecker. Yeah, the the, uh, the <laughs> see that Vic Bird. Wait a minute. That's the the right. now I'm getting really angry with it because <laughs> I mean it's, they're, oh, they're it's like a the, <laughs> the, the, the it's oh, square. No, it's oh, not even a good off now. It's not even four by three. It's square. It's one by one. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Watch a movie on there? Do we even have a shot of this, Jeremy? Do the people at home know? Are you gonna watch a turn of the century train coming at you like square? Wait, look at they have the remote cameras. You see that? They can control oh, the man. cameras from in there. That's what we need. Wow. Look at it moving. Know. Can we start doing our podcast out of here? And But we would be making wow. some major changes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are, is this a my doing a podcast or are you just sitting there critiquing everything that you've seen? <laughs> oh, look, the cameras are moving. I hate yeah. the screen. We would love you to. Where I'm do you free do Free association. Um, where, you know, do you, where do you do hey, your podcast? In my garage, which is now a studio. But yeah, in Glendale. Just in my house, at my house. Probably oh. was a little smaller well, than this room. We were doing it out of absolutely productions, and then the pan- we went on tour. The pandemic, pandemic hit, though you had to, the one you spread. We're stuck at home like everybody else, so right. we just started doing it. Well, there. it was your fault. You want to come here and do it? I don't. Not, not well. There's something really nice about just going downstairs. Not for them. They not can't them, find yeah. their way around. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, Have they found your imagine house? the first month of doing the podcast out of here would be not not good. I wouldn't have them leave. You guys can stay here from yeah, now on and just do the, the podcast. Yeah. You want to do fair. that? Yeah, that's um, We've been talking about this. We want to move can you in. Let we want to live. I'm sorry, but here's you know, what's very we, stressful. We're helping you is, fill the hour. He's <laughs> these guys these guys never they, they they lack a couple of instincts. One is the the signal I got from you was you were ready to move on to something else, and right at the last second, bing, in they come with something else to say. I saw that. You saw mm. that. But that, because I'm noticing, what's your first name really? I'm Doug. Doug, you don't make eye contact. He's I've been oh. looking at you guys all day. He's mm. not when I'm He's looking, looking right at you. Right he is not, very why? sketchy. Wow. Very sketchy. No, guy. but that's the thing. But in, <laughs> in order to pick up signals, I was about to go on to another subject, but you were just looking down. You were just looking down. You weren't you're not He's looking at me. Well, so when I'm hard. thinking creatively, yeah. I have to look around. Right. Kind of <laughs> right. Right. Were you actually ready to go on to another subject? Right. You were thinking yeah. of something? See, See, I'm another, a talk show host. I go into I know like, the, a, I know my stuff. like a wog from the Game of Thrones where I have to go into my mind. A wog, right? No, no, but you're not. You're not picking up any of my signals. You're well, not. I should Dad. get that checked out. I should get that you, checked you, out. You, you yeah. do I'm going to zero in. Why are you saying that? Your eyes are yeah. a bit shaded, to be honest. Because it's right? I'm wearing glasses. I have yeah. glasses. I can see. I can make eye. Con- I'm making eye t- contact with you right now. It's Tim very nice. I, and I just natural. need an excuse for why me. I'm not contacting. <laughs> well, I can't. I haven't seen Tim once this entire interview. <laughs> there he is. You so. couldn't find the fucking building. I couldn't find that. I can barely find Tim in here. I think this is going well. <laughs> All right. Is this distracting you? Do you want no, me to turn I'm, this I've off? I've become 
at one with it now and I've, I've become zen about it. Can I be it. honest with you? So this is something I got for free and I didn't know where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> see, see I, I'm getting to the root now of where why things are the way I they have. are. That's everything in this building, by the way. If you go walk around, we have a ton of you stuff. You have that cost looks like... me a fucking fortune. Me? <laughs> you. Why? Well, what is your actual <laughs> home like? Is it very sparse and very like... This is where I live. This is my home. <laughs> Wait, Welcome to my home. Why have I cost you a fortune? You said everything in the building was free. You think you were free? Oh, you think not I me. <laughs> no, I get it. No, but this is all stuff that I've collected throughout the years. That's wow. the center booth from Caesar's Palace, the original. Wow. Did you, was that a, a mainstay for you, Caesar's Palace? Was that your home at a certain point? No. Like, no. No. No, but it was a free chair. Were you, you know how people put their furniture out on the sidewalk when they're moving or they want yeah. an old couch? The same thing happens in Vegas. When they were building the new uh, place. Showroom for, or something? The showroom for Celine Dion. Mm -hmm. All their old furniture was out front. They had old stained couches and they had wow. this. So we took this. Wow. It's a true, I mean, it feels like. I was at Caesars. That was up, that was in service up until when? Like 10 years ago or something? Mm. When did Celine Dion start working at Hold on, let Caesars me remember. Palace? I'm a big Celine Dion <laughs> freak. Nine, I know six. everything about her. When did Celine Probably Dion? Like 20 August thirtieth. Right? No. Wait, he's got it. <laughs> August thirtieth, two thousand six. <laughs> That's it. Anyway, oh, yeah. so it's up until that. That was the center booth at the original Caesar's Palace, and wow. I and I did play there, and I stole that sign too. <laughs> the sign is great. Caesar's Palace is not responsible for any items left backstage or in dressing rooms. <laughs> so I took it. Could be oh, so the <laughs> sign. <laughs> That's, that justifies the okay. 2011. Yeah. That's what I thought. You, you were pretty mm, close. Wow. Pretty close. Oh, what? 2011. So that was in service up until probably 2010. Because, right. you know, the. Uh, yeah. So that's a, a 12 years ago. Eric and people... I once did I a said... show. Sorry to interrupt, but there was this time right when we were coming up. Doug was probably there for this. There was the. the remember the Aspen Comedy Festival? Yes. So they. We never were, were a part of that, but for one year. They decided to try it in Vegas. The Aspen Comedy Festival. Yeah. They're going or to try it in moved, Vegas. Like, I guess HBO or TBS or somebody was right. doing in charge of that comedy festival. And they're like, we're going to do it in Vegas this year. And they hired a bunch of people. I think like Jerry Seinfeld was the headlining Headliner. guy. But they also hired us, Tim and Eric, to come with our gang of goons to do a show. And we did this show in Caesar's Palace at one of the, in one of their like, it was like Ball, a conference room. Co conference room. Right. You know, like not a real, <laughs> right. not even the, a, a not on the barge, yeah. Yeah. not on the, not in a showroom, not, not in, in the, the. No, it was just like a makeshift stage. And it was so bizarre. It was kind of, I don't think the tickets sold well. And so, so they just started like letting people in from the casino to come see our <laughs> show, which as you can imagine was that, those a are nightmare your people. experience. Yes. It was like a true and we weren't even good at what we were doing yet. So it was very genuinely weird and uncomfortable with a lot of like people with free tickets who were just like, uh, this is not, this doesn't feel safe. I don't want to be here. But they gave Eric and I separately each that those giant suites, like the fucking you know those sweets. Caesar suites or whatever. Like a whole, I could have lived the rest of my life there. It was <laughs> my daughter grew up in those suites. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. And then it was when they were themed, right? And they had like star, shooting star mm. things on the ceiling mm, and right. a big hot tub in the middle of yeah, the room. Yeah, it was crazy. Did you have your own suite? No, I was I was little, so I was with my parents. You know, they had they put us. They said they were going to get. <laughs> but a she did get a suite. That's what I, why I asked. It would have been cool if you had your own as well. You know. No. You know, they gave Doug was there. They gave Eric and I these beautiful suites, and they gave him a sour. Yeah. <laughs> There's the word play again. The I got word. a salad. I got a Caesar salad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the dads out there are yeah, probably well just laughing their asses up. We, you got to get in we, here. That's all we really care about. <laughs> write that down for the fake ad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, uh, they grew up on the road. So they, your kids come on the road with you? No. no Never. No way. Do you have just one, you have one, you have an eight year old daughter? A five year old son yeah and do they how do they feel about what you do do you ever play that because that stuff is so amazing yeah they do they've started they're starting to zone in on it a little bit my, my daughter is she thinks it's really funny to some degree so she <laughs> likes your stuff and christ yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's an equal opportunist yeah 
Yeah, and what is next for you? I know I, I, you were talking to me before the show that you have a band. I'm not really well, familiar yeah. with your band. Well, you're not familiar with anything, apparently, because no, you, I'm these not. guys are a big part of my life. No, I'm um, not. <laughs> I had no idea. I have no idea, but I'm here to learn. I'm also, like the audience. I'm playing the new Spider Man. You've seen that. That was, and I won an Academy Award. I don't know if you know that. I didn't know. Um, Did you see his Oscar last night? Yeah, too? I won the Oscar. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I, well, I, I have a side career i guess as a musician serious musician yeah i i mean i'm a serious guy uh about what i do so it, whether it's comedy or music or but is dance the music funny or, or dance you're a serious dancer i would love to be a serious <laughs> dancer um but yeah the music is i love i mean music is kind of the first love of my for really me, so when of. you came out here or were you, you guys started in college right you and yeah. Tim started together in college yeah. but it, it was that the dream was that the hope to be a musician I think in maybe in high school it would have been but in college I got into film and started working more uh, trying to make stuff in the, I loved it all I loved theater and you had a band in college I had a yeah I had bands in high school and college so it was all it was all going it was, all, it was like whatever hit first you just ran with that you know so would you ever consider, you know, it would be a good thing. Why wouldn't you come on America's Got Talent with your band? Seriously. Oh. I don't wow. I think it's all rigged. Yeah, there it is. I think it's all rigged. It's not. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 I mean, what the kind of music I play is definitely not popular music. Oh, that's good. So you've got uh, your own niche. Unpopular yeah. music. Unpopular? <laughs> is it's, the, unpop it, it's what do you, how would you describe, talk about my music? It's kind of 70s you singer, songwriter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's poppy, sardonic. It's, I mean, it's, Randy Newman, yeah, it's who has not, never been popular. Never. Mm -hmm. he Randy had a couple Newman of hits, but it's not current, trendy Billie Eilish stuff. It's right. uh, you know, it's throwback rock and roll. But I mean, um, but it's more of like what everything Tim's done, where he's like, he's making himself happy, he's making himself laugh, he's making, you know, he's doing the art for himself. I think, and that's isn't that what most extension. great artists that yeah. are uh, successful do? Definitely. We had a fan. Uh, this this ties it together a little bit. We had a, a fan of Office Hours. Uh, cover one of my songs who was on uh, uh, your show, uh, Sarah Potenza. You on, Sarah? on AGT? Yeah. She covered your song? Not on, she didn't cover my song on, but she, she kind of blew up on uh, TikTok covering one of my songs. Can we, can we pull that up? Yeah, Sarah Potenza. And she was on America's Got Talent. Uh, too, Trump, but not singing your song. Not singing my song. Uh, what, Sarah what Potenza, what's Sarah the song? Sarah Potenza, she covered Trump, uh, I did these Trump Oh yeah, uh, Trump song. Tower. I think Trump it was. Tower. Yeah. yeah, look up Sarah Potenza Trump Tower. It's happening as we speak. Okay. Good thing we have that screen so know, we can we see, see it. it. Yeah. yeah. So well, I can hope they don't it. not show it here now because I really I'm I really like the screen now. Oh. They will. But you know, without the headsets, you're not going to hear it. I know. You imagine it on Instagram or yeah, a they bunch can't of find places. it. Sarah Potenza, no, we got it Instagram yeah. photos. Yeah. And then, uh, I mean, how do you remember all these people? I know she, she, she went fairly, I don't know how deep she's she playing went here. I think system. next week too. I'm going to go see She's her like her. a, oh, she is. Yeah. I think so. She's got an incredible Where is she voice. from? Yes. She should have won. Where she's, is she from? She's Nashville. Nashville. Right? Yeah. But I think originally New York. Um, I think, I don't know. You guys can find it. She it's put it, somewhere. she put it out officially too. I Even think. if it takes long, thank God you brought an editor. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> because Trump, we can there, cut this. This is it. Oh, oh yeah. It? Okay, let's hear. So this is a song I wrote that she's performed. Since 2010, he's been the butt of my jokes. And a special guest in my darker dreams. And I guess I thought when that's big voice, huh? She's amazing. He'd eventually choke. <laughs> I can come back to my little scene. Wow. Sounds good. Now he's risen to the top of the world. Power. And my friends say that I should scrub my history. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So do you incredible. sing? Yeah. 
So you you would you would sing that when you do this? I wouldn't do it like that. I mean, I don't. She's like, polishing yeah. the turd like Vic and I do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So when you yeah. do, if you do material like that, do you find that because I would imagine being on Adult Swim, you have, you know, it's, it's a network. Yeah. So there's people from both sides. For sure, both so, sides. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I. Uh, Are you getting it hit? Took, it took a lot of yeah. Take I take a lot of heat for that stuff. You do. Yeah. And does that. But, it, I don't. But, I don't know. For the in the case of, uh, yeah, we don't have to get too political. But the case of Trump, it just felt like. I mean, Vic too. Oh uh, yeah, was I also mean, his yeah. thing. But it was like, he just couldn't stay quiet. I couldn't yeah. stay quiet about it. it He's like so a Tim and Eric uh, rage, But the difference the wild, between you know? what you're doing and what 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 what, yeah. what Tim is doing is you're out front. What I'm yeah. saying is, yeah. if you're performing live in a club and yeah. you start doing this, I would imagine. Well, yeah, I, I, the thing is, I've never been, uh, I've never like been a guy that like would just be at a club, I think. Like, if where, do do a show, like where do you play? Where do you play with the band? Uh, I mean, I would say like, how do you, how do I describe, how do I explain this? Like, it's a club, it's a theater. Yeah, I mean, like, I just wouldn't be like, you wouldn't book me at like a comedy club in Kalamazoo or something right. for a week. I'm where not, would your band I'm, play? Uh, in LA, we'd play at like the Zebulon or, uh, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, and with Eric too, like when we would play, the audience would be there to see us. They're not there to see entertainment or comedy or music. They're there, you know, they're there to see us. They know the deal. They know the deal. They they're in it. on the joke or they're, they're, they're fans. I guess the reason I, I bring it. Okay, so go it's ahead. hard. It's a little hard to just say like. Oh, I'm going to be down at the uh, Irvine Improv for a week, and whoever's there, it's going to appeal to them. It's not going to. It's not going to appeal to everybody. Right. So I'm never going to try to do that because you can have a different life where you just go on the road. I mean, a good example might be like the band Fish, who I don't necessarily like, but they have an audience that will do and go to see them, you know, wherever, whenever they're doing their thing. But you might not want to book Fish at the fairgrounds for the week because <laughs> people might be like annoyed with it you know do you guys perform I, would just, oh, okay. I would think though that once you start opening up and talking about whatever your political views may be mm -hmm. you garner the audience that agrees with you well, so sure. necessary so like if they're going to see you it's probably the audience that has the same point of view because yeah. you've been open about it and you've already it's not going to be a big surprise right yeah yeah but i, I, I was going to say like I, I mean trump is like you you've mocked him for years I and mean, yeah. i remember the first time i saw you do stand up you were you know mocking him or whatever but like i mean it's he, like outside of politics really, like, and policy he's, he's a, a ridiculous yeah. character right. in the world all i'm saying is that now and maybe i'm more um uh raw about it right and i don't know how long after the event that happened at the academy awards uh -huh. You know, this is this is actually airing. But, you know, now uh, hitting hot points on stage is going to mean so much more. And I was, if anything came out of personally for me at the Academy Awards was fear, you know, of opening up this can of worms to an audience that doesn't agree one. And all it takes is one person that mm -hmm. doesn't agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know. Up until now, it was about being canceled. It was maybe about being disliked or not right. booked. Mm -hmm. Now you can get hurt. So, d d you know. Yeah. I mean, luck. I mean, we, well, Vic and I have both dealt with this where that sort of troll mentality online often feels very removed and very out in the comment sections. But there were points in our, both of our lives where it suddenly showed up at our doorstep in very real ways. Really? Um, uh, are you okay yeah. to talk about it? Well, just uh, nothing. I mean, nothing you know, too, stuff sent yeah. to our house, and Vic had a how, visitor. How they, how, I had a, the door. a visitor from the Proud Boys come to my house and tell me to stop making fun of them and to stop making videos about them. They found your. They address? found my address, and the guy, yeah, some wacko drove from uh, Boston to Pennsylvania at the time to knock on my door. <laughs> Yeah, we don't need to get we don't need to bring it down too low. <laughs> no, but, but, but it's but not bringing it down. I think it's like it's kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting. It, yeah. it is real. You get, there's articles about it and stuff. You know? There's uh, you know, you do make you do risk when you speak publicly about how you feel about things. Of course, you risk opening yourself up to people that disagree with you. Yeah, um, but we all all of us in mm -hmm. this room. Put me on the rack next time. <laughs> 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 uh, 
we're in we're in comedy and we're just here to make people laugh. Yes. And you know, it's just more dangerous to make fun of somebody now than it so was. So are you suggesting though that the uh, I assume we're talking about the Will Smith situation. Yeah. You feel that that has that that has a there are consequences to that now like it changed the game in a way in some way absolutely yeah absolutely yes i believe that you know um hate uh dislike violence uh negativity is probably the most contagious mm. aspect of our of humanity and i always you know and 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 people i was talking to somebody about this this is not this is a bad equivalent mm -hmm. but it isn't you know i i think that you know uh you know the first school shootings were yeah. in the 70s but people had guns before the 70s but right. well, th that opened a door for somebody right. who's incredibly right. depressed and felt bullied it, that's uh, it introduced uh, uh, the concept into society right yeah. and just like when you get one heckler in a room or you get you start getting comments online mm -hmm. it that kind of snowballs into a lot of comments, into a troll, into right. that. And, you know, comedy is a place where you can and should, if you're doing your job, offend people. Sure. You know, I just think Oh, that I mean, we ride, I, I try to ride that line as close to the line as possible with, you know, coming from a place of... Uh, well, Tim and Eric, if anything, yeah. if you could do, is inappropriate, which is, sure. the, which is the humor, yeah. which is the beauty of what it is. But by that now it seems like the dislike or the people that don't get it they've gotten a, kind of an okay right to now be violent i mean one step you just talked about somebody showing up at your house mm, yeah and now it could go beyond that and i right. think when we see things and there are people out there who are applauding that kind of reaction yeah well that was the thing i mean because like it was i think there's a difference because they gave them the the main award of the night, you know, like giving the speech, right? It wasn't he, he won lead actor, <laughs> right. right? I mean, so that does normalize it. So in it's way. scary yeah, for it's... people like us mm -hmm. that do. I love to dangle on the inappropriate. Yeah, but now it's in the back of your head that, and that'll perhaps muzzle Edit. you before you even get one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Well, speaking right. of inappropriate, though, my dad used to show me your stand-up tapes back in when I was way too young to. But what was inappropriate about it, his dad used to have my VHS tapes and he yeah. used to walk in naked. That's, that's, I mean, rubbing his penis, going, what, look what? at this funny oh. comic. Look at this funny comic. No, I know. I, that's how my. Well, right. I don't, yeah. It's just how Well, we is. do that. I mean, we do Not a me. live, we do a live two hour show every Thursday and it's often improvised. I mean, it's all improvised. It's all off the seat of our pants, out of this. And, and, you know, we are going to, I'm going to say things that offend various people. We're going to, not be super sensitive about every single sub quadrant of type of person out there. I can't think of a good example. There was always something where I say something, and somebody writes like, "Hey, you know, I actually have like a, you know, I'm I'm actually struggling with my weight." And if you're like making light of the, f so you say, yeah, "My dad's or, a Grateful Dead fan." So why yeah. would you say something? Yeah. Like that? No, but so, every everybody, that's, everything, that's actually, everything <laughs> right. they can be sensitive yeah. about. But even things that are sensitive, I find myself in my life now. I've never thought this before. You know, I. Uh, I love stand-up comedy and stand-up yeah. comedy is my basis for everything that anybody knows me from. That's what, that was my go-to place. Not anymore. Right. I'm finished with that being this. I actually like this where I can yeah. have a conversation, but my fear is that, you know, that was the place where I can just take off any edit. Like you're talking about mm -hmm. your two hour show. Yeah. And it could just throw it out there and kind of discover my little art Yeah, or whatever. And, I, and you also have the room. I think people have the room to to have regret or apologize. If I say something that, I said something in the heat of the moment, it's not really where I feel. There's an opportunity to, I hope that we have an opportunity to say, you know what, I, I shouldn't, I apologize if that hurt your feelings. I think there's room for that too. But I think comedy is like shading, you know? And, and it's like, uh, I was talking to somebody before the show, comedy is an art form where it's, you know, you're gonna throw black paint onto the onto the canvas mm -hmm. and then you want to shade it and you mm -hmm. go that's too dark let me lighten it yeah, like, yeah. so you want to cross that line and yeah. that was the place where you could cross yeah, the line yeah. and then find out where you got to bring it back how right. crazy can you get and oftentimes how you figure that out in the confines and the comfort and privacy of the club itself not with the phones going and it being televised but right. it's amazing but what now, people are everybody's offended by everything you know i've i've apologized so many times in the last couple of years i'm on network television right and they make <laughs> me apologize for things that 
and I will, if you're offended or you feel bad, you know, well, I feel bad. how dare you judge people? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, but I do, I do feel bad. You I not criticize him just because he's not a good singer. That's not fair. <laughs> you know? But it's not even that. It's like, things, it's, it's funny that you say the Grateful Dead, you know, yeah. like you don't know what you're saying that people take, right? you know? Yeah, I mean, I think most people agree and most, but I mean, the Will Smith thing is a very extreme example, but it it is uh, a harbinger of maybe a bad, uh, you're right. It might he introduce opened the, the door. Concept. I think he introduced might, the concept yeah. and there's no backpedaling for that. Right. I'm not talking about him personally. I'm talking about from what people saw. Do you think saw. he introduced the concept and made it okay? Or do you think people's reaction and him get, getting an applause after when he's accepting the award and well, stuff like that kind I mean, of opens the door? I'll say one thing. I don't know how easy it would have been to like in real time like absorb what happened and then adjust for him whether or not he was going to win and how to deal. Like mm. I can only imagine that it was complete chaos with, with no one knowing what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, so therefore, well, how does happened that answer at, hurt? No, I just I think like it might not be as uh, like, yeah, I don't know. I just mean like I'm sure it was just pure chaos. But shouldn't anyone really... but shouldn't we know in the moment as human beings that you shouldn't go up and be violent? I would. I bet. A, I bet a good chunk of the people in real time thought it was a bit. Yeah, I, I mean, think. I did too. The first time I saw it, I thought it was because if you didn't hear what he, I don't know. I I. I only but know it said, what I but know. Then, but then, but and then he sat down. Yeah, and then and started yelling. Got crazy. Right. So that's within it, thirty seconds right. of the actual hit. So right. you think that there's people there that thought it, even thought that was a bit? These are very stupid people. You have to remember, these are, <laughs> that, this is a that, room that, full of actors. That did, I don't oh, think that right. aired, that didn't air though. I don't think on American TV. I don't well, think. it didn't. Right. It, it, uh, it but you could hear it in the if you were if you were in the room, you could have heard. And you could read lips. Right, right, you know, yeah, but Vic. I feel like it was like <laughs> I feel like it was like a looking into a slice of his life that we shouldn't see. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> we shouldn't see. Like, well, it's been analyzed. If he but feels I think comfortable, it is to interesting do that. that he he laughed at the joke, yeah. right? And then <laughs> saw that she was not happy. And well, how long have you been married? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know enough but, not to take my wife was, to these events. Yeah. You know, <laughs> his he uh, there was an interview he did like I don't know if it was twenty years ago, and he's like, when I was fifteen, my first girlfriend cheated on me. So I said I was going to be the, become the best actor of all time to, to make up for it. Right. So that he's a kind of you can kind of see where is he's one of those. Types, wait, wait, you know? wait. So I don't, I'm, I'm trying to get you know. Well, he, I don't he get was the gonna connection. make up for for. So he was like hurt, wounded by this girl. Right. I, and that's he was his original that wound. Wound. It yeah. Was the same wound of like. The, uh, uh, the relationship thing. You're yeah. taking it like back to the life. breakup. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so, I just, yeah, yeah, I'm a little suspicious of these like hyper motivated, successful people in general. They usually turn out to be they're direct. psychos. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think. The, I mean, you seem very successful. <laughs> not so you. You're probably not, you. not, not me. <laughs> not you. No. No. I don't know, right? Aren't these all these people are like presidents? What, all what the they, presidents are loons. Right. Well, if you they're get out of the, touch, though. Yeah. Well, get to that place in life, you're like. He's trying to say something. Nutty. Well, Are I just we... I did have a thought that like uh, the, the for once we're all, we're all just gonna need we're all just gonna need bodyguards and the bodyguard business is gonna go through the roof. You know, you always see the glass half full. Glass yeah, half just, full. Comedians mm -hmm. can keep saying what they want. Just bring your bodyguard. This is really a boon to the bodyguard business. Yeah, Security. Time to invest. Security. Uh -huh. I love the way you think. <laughs> I wasn't. <a good, laughs> I think they should have like uh, in the Blues Brothers. They had the chicken wire up. You know, oh, in the just club, get the oh, chicken yeah. wire, yeah. Get that chicken invest wire. in chicken wire. Yeah, mm -hmm. for the stand-up community. Wow. Bring your own chicken wire cage when you do stand-up. <laughs> this is better than NFTs. <laughs> I'm telling you, chicken wire and security yeah. is where mm -hmm. you got to put your money. Lock it all down. People listen to this podcast for input on uh, business, on cryptocurrency, investing. That, yeah. Are you guys in cryptocurrency? Are you in cryptocurrency? No, no, I, no, no. I, you. Touch, I barely. I I'm, just, I'm, I'm making I, an episode for Vice News right now on it, but it's like I don't understand it. It's so know. confusing. We actually wait, wait, wait. making an episode and you don't understand. <laughs> I, that's what it's about. It's just me for me to learn things, and then I put out a video. Yeah. That's you, we, Eric, and I last year when NFTs just started bubbling up right. as a thing, mm -hmm. we didn't understand it, but someone was reached out to us and like, you can make good money, and you've got all this stuff, and you could own your own art and all that crap. And uh, so we, this guy set it up for us, and we're like, I had read a couple things where I was a little iffy about it, and a little confused, and then we did it. We we did one. Are you gonna throw up? <laughs> Just thinking about the experience. We did one. You're gagging. And within right away, 
it was like ding 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 people like no 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 this is the how could you this is i hate this not you got not you guys sellouts blah blah and we just tanked we just killed it right away (laughs) because it was so much more backlash was hard because i I read about it and i thought it was all i think it's all junk i still do um but i think it's a scam but we tried the scam and we realized that i think the perception of for us is way more valuable than whatever monetary gain even if it's some of it's like overblown a billion what what about what if it was a billion well there's always a number doug (laughs) (laughs) there's always a there's always a cash out number right but yeah i mean it just felt like the perception at least and some of it's true some of it's not but the perception from our audience who are very cool liberal woke people a lot of the time was that this wasn't (laughs) A good thing to be involved with, and so we just fucking bailed. It was just like, yeah. good. If somebody else can. We don't have to do all these things, you know. Right. It's but too you, much to really even absorb and understand. I kind of get the appeal though, where it's it's somebody explained to me as like baseball cards. Like I had baseball, basketball cards growing up, and everything. So you just put a value on it. It's just you know cardboard or whatever, but people are paying thousands of dollars for it. So it's. I, I understand. I, I I sort of get it. I sort of get it. I do get it. Yeah, you get it. I do. Do you think it's a pump and dump kind of thing where it's like, do you know who Gary V is? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Okay, because like I saw this like story of him where he he brought up or he he called all his richest friends and said, I'm selling V Bucks or whatever they are. And all these billionaires bought it. And then eventually they they you know they sell they talk about it to their friends and everything, and then they get out of it, sell it. And then they cash it's out, but then there's all these like little money laundering, I think it depends like multi-level on... marketing kind of thing. Well, in anything, there's going to be yeah. corruption, and there's going to be yeah. abuse. I mean, in, in anything. But I, what was always funny about crypto and the, the, you have these guys be like, "This is the one thing that's not that that they can't control, or that you you know like this is this uh, the exception to the rule," and that always felt disingenuous. But that's a, I, you know it's the same as just a regular stock market. Things right. like that too. Speculative. It's, yeah, it's always it's yeah. gambling, right? And right. gambling, and it's a game, mm-hmm. and life is a game, and you guys uh, are, seem to be playing the game pretty well. We are the masters of the game. You are the masters, We're spreading the virus, <laughs> d- d- making us dance. <laughs> so uh, on the podcast, how, you've never invited me. Well, I think this was you're the not entree. liked. I, you're what? not. You're not liked. He doesn't lo- like you. <laughs> I've well, never been on the Tim and Eric on show. Thursday. Well, I think what. This was about, it was a bit of a, like, you know, dogs at the dog park kind of sniff each other's ass and figure out if they like each other. <laughs> and? That's what this is. This is a little Oh, entree. so I think the smell. This you like so little, so how do I smell horsey, to you right now? This is horse trading. <laughs> a little horse trading. <laughs> this is, uh, I, I don't know if, how he would come to Glendale. What do you think? Do you think? Ooh, Glendale. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Uh, American Idol would be perfect. That would be Thursday. That would be Glendale yeah. is the land of the uh-huh. people. Did you know that? the land of the Armenian people, but I don't know about... People, what, what, what are you saying? <laughs> it's the land of the people. Caroline knows. What are you talking about? <laughs> no. <laughs> what are you saying? You can't the Kardashians just... said oh. it's the oh, land they... of the people. Oh. Because they're Armenian. Oh. It is they're Armenian. Armenian. It is a, Didn't uh, they? Isn't that the viral Armenian. sound? And then this isn't the land of the people, Kim. This is Glendale. Are the, do, the, oh. do the Kardashians live in Glendale? No. 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 The Armenian people do, but they're yeah. Armenian, right? Right. I thought, because uh, there are some swanky I, I don't know the Glendale. reference. I just know the viral sound from TikTok. Okay. Oh, great. We'll put that <laughs> in the drop, drop bucket. <laughs> do you ever get, um, uh, going back to, uh, so I'm fascinated, and I don't mean to dwell on this, but I'm fascinated by t- Tim and Eric. Yeah. The, 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 a lot of the characters, mm-hmm. did they get the joke? A lot of the, the real, the like. Whoever gets the joke, you know? I mean, yeah, I, some of them more than others, I think. We, it was never any kind of like it was definitely never a pr- like a hidden camera. Situation. No, it's yeah, not. Where they they're on a show. Yeah, and they, it yeah. was like this is a comedy show. You know, to this day when it, like I do another show called On Cinema, and there's uh, a lot of characters in that show, and the same thing went with Tim and Eric. Most of the time, we're our notes are just don't try to be funny. That's our own. Be we're casting you for who you are. Be yourself. The idea is funny. We're going to make it funny, but don't. I just think we had this attitude that, like, yes, we'll get That's to a, I like how we'll he signals it's time for me to. Oh, this is just for not, when you're done. I just. I, what? It, it was like, we didn't want to be the guys. There was a lot of sketch comedy where it was like young guys with gray wigs on. 
mm -hmm. and mustaches playing old people, you know? Right. And we're like, we let, why don't we just cast old people? You know, why don't we right. just cast real people to play these smaller parts? And then that led to sort of realizing the, uh, how much potential real people had in just being funny in their own natural way for who they are. What um, did you want to add to that? I, I think I know what you're getting at with the question, and I think to... I knew what he was getting at, too. It wasn't very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, some kind of genius when it comes to interpreting Howie Mandel? <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. He's a, he's a Mandel whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> I have the Mandela effect. <laughs> what, what did I, what did well, I mean? I, I basically... <laughs> what did I mean? Because I, I didn't you're get You're saying it. some of those people seem like, you know, maybe we're Exploited. making fun of them or something like that but i can say from firsthand experience that they seem genuinely like they're just happy to be maybe they don't get it but they're just super happy to be on the show and they come begging for more and right. then they're like personalities you know? on the web and, and they, maybe no, they don't know they're, they're just happy that people enjoy right? them yeah. and they you know they're they have no problem with it right you know so that's no i that's my favorite kind of comedy when it's a real person and when mm -hmm. you're watching it subliminally you know that that person that's what, why it's funny because they yeah. don't get it and they're really serious. They think they're on an interview show, right? Which isn't really an interview show; it's a sketch. But they don't know. Do they know they're in a sketch, or do they think that that interview show is real? All dolled up would be one exception. There's a, there's one exception. <laughs> there's always an exception. There were a couple of guys that were kind of background players on the show that we had smaller parts for, and what was so funny to 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 us about them was hearing them talk to other actors off camera right. about their war stories about being on shows and working on shows. Right. And I thought I would love to just capture how do you capture that in in the real in, on camera without, right. you know, uh affecting it through telling them what to do and so we did set up this one sketch called All Dolled Up that we could uh, you could put up. All Dolled Up. I think it's my favorite sketch that we've ever done, but we <laughs> we basically the sketch was a, a talk show where two actors talk uh, about their experiences, but while they're being while <laughs> while they're getting uh, uh, clown makeup applied, to they them, think they're okay? in a makeup chair for yeah. a shoot coming up. But yeah. this is the shoot. But we they, ended but they up, don't the only time we did this is we just started rolling before we rolled before we came down on set. So we rolled. We just let the <laughs> and of course that's a lot of uh, oh that's you know, amazing. That's People a lot need of to watch. Guy. Yeah, what is Ten this Tennessee guy? Luke Fortenberry, right? He just yeah another just. You know, I mean, we grew up with Letterman and right. and Larry Bud Melman, Melman and those yeah. kind of people, and just being like, some there's just people out there just true originals. I love that. I love that. You know, I used to. Where fight. else are they going to fit in except in our world? You but know, that's the thing. You know, I I always used to argue with Howard Stern. Yeah. Always when he was a host, when he was a when he was a judge on right. America's Got Talent, mm -hmm. and I said I grew up like that. I grew yeah. up. You know, Tiny Tim was the first person I was aware of. Sure. You know, that was kind of different yeah but celebrated yeah and you know and and while um professor erwin corey that remember? i didn't i don't know that you don't I, know who he is no no, no, no i'm older than you guys up. i'm yeah. i'm gonna be 67 this year oh. professor erwin corey um put up professor erwin corey i'll show you who he was but he was like larry bud melman before larry bud melman yeah and all the and i and uh and there was people that were always on talk shows just because they were yeah eccentrics they, they were eccentric and i used to say and i I used to want to put them through because right. I think they can be a star and stand out. And I would go see if you could put together a whole show with these two guys right. all dolled up in Vegas, I probably would go to that <laughs> show sure, yeah. and probably your followers would, yeah, you know, yeah. put a, a but huge it, production around. I understand around that there's a very large group of people out there that find that uncomfortable to watch. And so that's but I not always for say to them, mass... you know, this is, this is Erwin Corey. Look, he's right. on Letterman. Watch is he it. the real guy or is he doing a bit? He, he wasn't that different in real. He kind of understood what he was, but I never saw him like even in 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 public different. Play, play him for a second. Of our birth, I was born in New York, and being born in New York was being wonderful because you know on a clear day you could see where you live. A lot of people don't realize that they move to Peoria where it's quiet. There's no trains, no buses. It's yeah. nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. He doesn't make my contact here. either. Yeah. <laughs> fellow, fellow genius. But yeah. well, I mean, yeah. Howard Stern of all people yeah. is yeah. one of the That's kings one of, of this as well. That's one of the reasons that people right. his, are ill-informed. Right. 
You've got to ask questions, <laughs> not from those who seem to be in the place of authority, because they are only there okay. due to the graciousness. <laughs> okay, but yeah. anyway, he was just, a, it's just a point of, I don't know if that's the funniest bit he's done. Well, but it's also just for Letter Letterman to have something fun to play around with. Like, right, but I love these oddballs. Uh, again, in our society right now, when I celebrate that, mm -hmm. uh, even on AGT, people go, you're making fun. And I'm not really making fun at all. I'm enjoying, yeah. I'm enjoying mm -hmm. the oddity of humanity. Yeah. And I want to celebrate and give this person a platform and somebody that is a little bit different. And if you can celebrate that uniqueness, mm -hmm. see, the, the, yeah. I find like the Tim and Eric stuff, like all dolled up. Yeah. That's great. Is as much as it's so out there, it's crazy, crazy subtle. Yeah. Because well, most people, I think a lot of people are like those guys and right. don't see the, don't see what I, or some of us feel is funny about that kind of braga, braga, bra, what do you say? Uh, Bragadishi. Bragadishio, that sort of <laughs> attitude an Italian of word. knowing <laughs> to like being a little arrogant about something that you shouldn't be arrogant about. That's what I pick up. But even, them. and even those cuts and the cuts, you know, the, and, no, the, the, you know, that's mm, subtle. That's really yeah. subtle. And people laugh at it and don't know why they're laughing. You know, yeah. the juxtaposition of the bravado with this silly makeup is, is brilliant. Yeah. Thank but you, you can't... don't know why la the laughing is my favorite type of Steve laugh. Martin. Uh, I think he was on Howard actually talking about this when he put out his book, Still Standing or whatever. Right. Said he was like a traditional stand up for a few years, like telling jokes. And he got like had this crisis where he's like, I want to get to that place in comedy that you have with your friends when you're laughing and it's this rolling laughing where you've kind of, you don't know where it begins and ends. And it's just, it's that guttural. It's like the way you're feeling watching all dolled up. It doesn't really, there's no punchline in there. There's no setup. There's no, There's just the, ex, the wave of the experience of it. But there's also a subliminal feel that it's real. Yeah. It's not a written, like I don't like jokes. Yeah, yeah. The, the fact that that is real yeah. makes it even more. That yeah. is genuine comedy. That's right. what comedians, you know, they can make fun of something and that sounds derogatory, but they're not. Yeah. What, what are you enjoying? You're seeing the humor where other people don't see the humor. The more serious those guys are, the more real those guys are, the funnier those sure. guys are. Yeah, and, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm with you. I know that if, some if, people I would show that to would go, Okay. I you wonder know, what fifteen year old. Be... No, it's kind oh, of like. Do you like? Do you like Curb Your Enthusiasm? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Curb Your Enthusiasm is kind of got a real. I, I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. But you know, when you think about something that is that supposedly successful, in HBOs, they're getting on HBO. They get maybe a million viewers. Right. Maybe two million would yeah. be huge on that right. show. Most people, as I travel around the world, they go, you know, he's, he's so mean. Right. Yeah. And that's the it's too uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. But that's why it's funny. That's the, mm. you know, that's the good stuff for us. But I could, I could name a dozen shows that I would probably watch and, you know, grin and bear through it. Like my daughter watches these, you know, there's these sitcoms now that are on Netflix that are like for, I don't know who they're for. They're for like kids, but they're like that Disney Disney's sitcom guy. format that there's a laugh track and it's a family and there's, yeah, that, you know, it's that like, doesn't work. It doesn't make me smile. No, you know? it doesn't make me smile at all. No, but I love that's that's why I love you guys. I love and and people don't know and I, I being the, the fact that you have the ability to edit and to create a rhythm that mm. makes you laugh. It's kind of like jazz music. Well, it is you like know? music. I mean, we but both, it is. We all play music, and it yeah. feels like it. Is, but it a, is, you know, really good music. Jazz is really good. Jazz doesn't really, you know. That's you a don't good go sample, by the way. We're gonna take. <laughs> we're gonna take Howie Mandel saying jazz is really good, and it's gonna be on our show. Trust me. <laughs> it's it's loaded with if drops. it makes it, oh, yeah, so <laughs> bad. But that's what I love. It. I love the rhythm of these cuts, and I love when I laugh at it. It's it's like a cymbal hit, you know. Yeah. When you, mm -hmm. When you see a shot of like weird and every and even the choices in the discussion yeah you ever done stop motion you know yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah 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 i rigged yeah. the hell out of mash <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay. Great. Just, guys i was put in a green suit with yeah. some ping pong yeah. balls <laughs> it's just fucking amazing and you guys have always as a group delivered a what i believe is the highest ranking 
jazz albums of comedy that I have ever seen. And I, I envy you and was jealous of you because I have that, I like that. Yeah. I've fallen into and enjoy doing uh, broadcast yeah. TV. There's no way any broadcaster would have allowed me to do, you know, anything like you're doing. I love yeah. what you're doing. And that must be such a joy just to be, it is like you just articulated one yeah. to be with your friends just to do silly things. That's yeah. why I bought this building. Yeah. And a lot of things I do end up nowhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's what we want to show on our channel. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's funny. But I just have a good time doing it. And if yeah. me and two people laugh, yeah, I really live by that adage. If I could just make one person laugh, which is most of my time. It's just making one person laugh. And that one person is just me. <laughs> it's not your daughter. No. no. Do we Definitely not mom. No. Never. Nobody laughs in my house at me. No, you do. You yeah, think I'm, no, no, I think I'm funny, funny, right? Now I think he's funny. Yeah. Yeah, growing now? Up, like yeah. growing up, though. We've talked about this. He wasn't funny growing up. He wasn't no. a funny dad. We're, we're not, so he didn't bring it home? No. The humor. The, no. the, the energy. No. Because no. your early stuff is so, pa is so full of... And energy is the word. And right? I also but wasn't fear. allowed to see your stand-up when I was younger too. When I was, let's put up some early mm -hmm. Howie Mandel. I was watching yeah. some before, you know, preparing for this. And I, I when I was growing up, you were wait a one second. Of the, You're prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I yeah, put I just wanted the, to watch on the young your clips because when I was growing up, I remember like, of course, oh, the, it was a the classic. The, yeah. It was a phenomenon. You know, the glove on the head was like yeah, one of the it. first stand-up mm -hmm. things I remember. Like, so I've up. told this many times, but the truth of the matter is, I went up on a dare. You know, oh wow, and that was just fear. And I thought right. the joke was going to be, they said you should get up on stage. I'm not a fucking comedian. I'm going to get. I, I thought the joke. I didn't think things through. Was somebody was going to go, ladies and gentlemen, Howie Mandel. Who the fuck is Howie Mandel? <laughs> that's that's the joke, right? Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Schmo. Yeah. And I was going to walk up, and then in that moment, after I walked up, I noticed uh, people sitting there waiting, and out of that came pure fear instinct and, and yeah, instinct right. and i went okay 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 <laughs> yeah, all right okay yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. That's how you all right that. and they yeah. started giggling at the okay and i went <laughs> what, what 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 yeah, okay. yeah. all right okay and oh, I, wow. I also put my hands in my pocket and i uh, you probably know i have ocd yeah I have, and i carried rubber gloves with me because i know when i was out i would have to go to public restaurants oh wow so that's yeah. going so all i had it and then i go I okay okay and i just pulled it over my head and i started breathing and they started laughing as the fingers were going up and then i blew it off the first First time? The first time. Wow. And I went, and I went, good night. Wow. <laughs> you know? Get and out of there. Wow. And the guy went, you got to come back tomorrow. And I go, what do I do? He goes, do the same thing. I go, I did nothing. <laughs> I did nothing. And my whole act was based on nothing. Yeah. Which I thought was a joke. And Steve Martin yeah. was one of my favorite yeah. comedians of all time at the time before I, sure. I watched Richard Pryor work because the joke that I related to was he was joking about bad jokes yeah right the wild and crazy guy well, the guy with the, yeah the, the, you know. right i think it, what happens is you have to if you are talking to an audience that is a frame of reference for culture or for maybe in pop culture or like just life uh then you can make those kinds of jokes because it's like we've been we've been oversaturated with with humor with jokes so we get it already now we can make fun of that stuff, right? Can we? Well, some, not now. We've not, maybe right, right, not right, right now. Right now, yeah. I, I'm feeling there are so many, and that's why I well, love I you. Well, I do a stand-up I do a bad stand-up character. Uh, if you put in an evening with Tim Heidecker real quick, just to an show you what it looks. And Heidecker. you will see what an asshole I can trailer? become very quickly. Watch the trailer. Or the trailer, I don't know. But Is it the trailer? An you can just put the whole thing on and just, just let skip it roll. anywhere. But uh, he's, he's a bad guy. And lately I've been doing the act where I come out. But you're using your real name. So do people know that you're doing a character or do they think they, it's you? They uh, figure it out eventually, usually. I used to do it in front of unsuspecting audiences and they would, you know, be very uncomfortable because. And that wasn't that great. And it was fun. But it is also fun to get laughs too, you know? <laughs> so I, I love I'll hate. Both I love hate. And take it down because when I say TNA, I'm talking about token and ale. So, <laughs> so it looks like a stand up set. And I'd be right. What I else? I love food. Way. Everybody here, I mean, I love food. I love, I'm, I guess I'm a foodie. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a foodie. 
sue me. I'm a foodie. I, uh, There's one joke here. I said to my friend, and he said, you got to use this in the show. I said, um, <laughs> I said, if I ever get to go to another planet, right? I said, if I ever get to go to another planet, uh, I will not be saying, take me to your leader, right? You see that in the movies. Take me to your leader. Uh, I will be saying, take me to your sushi. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what a foodie I am. Sucks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So listen, folks. Like it doesn't rhyme with leader, you know? Yeah, no. And <laughs> I... Uh, but he fought, like, throughout I've this special, this he kind of falls time. apart emotionally and so many people psychologically. He kind of has a meltdown. And, uh, and, Oh my God! Yeah. I gotta watch this. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. on Netflix. Do yeah. transform. Netflix? No, it's just on YouTube. It's on YouTube. A little more parental. YouTube. I, 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 now that don't I don't watch, watch the end, the 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 um, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> no Netflix and all those people said, oh, I, I, yeah, "You're a funny guy, but it feels like you're making fun of comedy." You're making really? fun of comedy Which now. You can't. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> you gotta be careful with that because you can't make fun comedy's of comedy. sacred. You know. <laughs> So <laughs> we don't want you making fun of comedy. Yeah. Comedy is a serious, serious yeah. thing. It is serious. Children could die. Yeah. That but is you'll amazing. Love it. I will love it. I already love it just with that one joke. But yeah. you know, it's it's so sad. Get that... my face off the screen, please. I can't take it. You just don't like the screen. No. <laughs> That's weird. Um the the thing that I that is amazing is that kind of commitment. Yeah. to a character or to a vibe that you want to create. And I love, everybody that works with me knows, I love, it's always somebody around me that says, it's enough already, Howie, that you got to break that tension. Right. And because I'm locked into network TV and whatever else I'm doing, I have to do it like behind the scenes. <laughs> and it's always my... That's why I live. You guys are like a dream, and 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 I really, as much as I, I didn't know who you were. <laughs> oh, I love. <laughs> no, I mean they're easy to like right away, yeah. right? No, but yeah. not. But now that I realize you are the guys behind that work and those cuts and what you're doing, you're fucking brilliant. You're like conductors of comedy, of great comedy. You really. Well, I'm absolutely. the conductor. They're the uh, oboe players or whatever. <laughs> no, you're like the musician. Yeah, <laughs> you're like playing it, and I'm then the they... soloist uh, mm -hmm. up front. We're the composers. No, so, wait a minute now. We're composing. Easy. But it's, it is truly amazing, and it is a, a, an amazing art form that people don't give enough credit. And when something looks silly or looks uh, off, yeah, um, I think too much of our, our world says that's just silly or it's off and right. don't realize what kind of work, effort, time, and thought goes into being silly and off. I think it might also be because of our culture just in America, because I know that people in different countries have different tastes in comedy. Like mm -hmm. the office in England, right, in the UK was very different comedy than the office here yes, yes, in yes. the US. So I think British comedy, British likes uh, Europe is awkward. much more. I love awkward and I yeah. love that. Mm -hmm. And we have always, you talk about those sitcoms now, yeah. you know, they have to have moral come up and yeah. if somebody does something bad then they got to win at the or lose at right. the end and that's not that that takes away from comedy right you know and it's, I also think that this is maybe going down a, a, the wrong road but uh I I realized how like in the 80s we grew up with a lot of uh kind of like right and I'm not saying like necessary political but I guess maybe political kind of a right wing perspective on the world like police academy right uh, I think Bill Murray and those kind of movies have this not it's hard to put a finger on, but it's it's assholes who are rewarded for being assholes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. if right. You think about so what, some of those so what movies, does that do? It it kind of emboldens a ideology, I think, maybe I haven't fully the thought rating, this out. Uh, yeah, 80s, just sort of like um, you you're you should be uh, like you can you can succeed if you're a jerk. Kind of a but it's a different like a bully, like Peter Pan. I told you this. What's the Peter Pan? Peter Pan was rewarded and he was looked at as the hero, but really he's the one that was kidnapping kids and Hook was trying to stop him. Oh, that's a good point, right? Go. 
So Hook was actually point. the what hero. What does it have to do with this conversation? <laughs> I'm just no, saying I'm we're, sure. reward, we're rewarding. Yeah, we're talking about the eight. The asshole, <laughs> and Peter Pan is the asshole who is stealing kids. Uh, it's interesting. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> point. That's a good point. Thank we'll you. edit that into Thank another you. podcast. <laughs> 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 Because <laughs> we're talking about comedy, but the truth. No, the, he's I get talking. what you're saying. No, but I it is the same saying. thing. It's how people view whatever it is they're watching and listening to, and how <laughs> that kind of affects our life. Right. But the truth is, at the same time, it is comedy is very um, myopic in the sense that who's ever watching it and whoever that audience is, you know, it's not the same kind of audience that will like the Bill Murray movie right. that might like. Um, I'm trying to think of at the time, there's different kinds of comedy. There's a lot of different, you know, within our own community, in the comedy community, we are the harshest critics of each other. Yes. I was always um, disrespected and made fun of. I'm sure. Always. And that's because at the beginning when I started like that and I was doing prop comics, I talked to Scott uh, Caratop all the time. Yeah. Caratop has to create whatever it is and sure, whether right. you like oh, it. Yeah. I think he's the a whole, brilliant yeah, guy. Yeah. He is building props yeah uh, writing lines that come to him, and not only that it's successful yeah he fills he's been in at the luxor he's got his own room for 10 years there's a lot of lesser comics that that uh put him down right he yeah. has the ability easy to, punch does, line does he does, how does he feel about it does he horrible like, he feels terrible about yeah. It? yeah okay and i did too for years yeah. i was the punchline and on uh, letterman's top 10 and uh, uh, you know right. the tenth thing, and yeah. we'll make him sit through a Howie Mandel concert, right? Uh, you know, but within, as opposed to somebody who was just a uh, a brilliant monologist who talked about uh, political things or yeah, things that were yeah, happening yeah. in the yeah. paper, you know, those people were kind of the lauded truth. the truth. truth. Right. And then truth. Right. if you're doing things that are silly <laughs> mm -hmm. and off, then you're oh, even, we get low class. I mean, but that's the we point. Have this dichotomy where we often get talked about in very highbrow terms because of our. our Art, the kind of the art artistic side of our work but also are just derided for being nothing but poop jokes and brown and you know like just low class weird for the sake of weird by all kinds of people and then in the middle ground is sort of the serious comedians who don't think what we do is is funny i think what you do is beyond funny. funny i think what you do is beyond and maybe coming from me it doesn't mean anything in the world but i really truly believe that you have a higher level of comedy and you build a, 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 a world, not only there's a world, there's yeah. a, there's a, um, a, a patina to, to yeah. whatever that Tim and Eric world was. Yeah. And even, and, and that is even more than sounding like the guy who was always made it onto the tonight show talking about, you know, commercials and right. things yeah. like that, or waiting for, or how to reset the microwave, uh, timer. Right. And God bless that stuff too. I don't. I mean, I like it. I'm all. not knocking that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that that was held in esteem. Where I think that doing that is kind of easier than what you do, and and what you do as a group, and what yeah. you need to do in concert together. You you right. know you have to be in front of the camera. You guys have to cut what you see. You have to take things that already exist on another level and then recut it and make it mean something totally different, just by editing. So I am such a huge fan of everything you do. I uh, I wanted to have you here today because I'm begging to work with you in any capacity, oh, wow. all three of you. That's a dream come true. No, yeah, I mean, a little, dream come true. I, I've been around for people, 40 uh, fucking years. <laughs> you tired of people just, like, complimenting uh, little monsters? Because that's like huge for me. I don't know. Oh, thank you. It's huge. And my Th kids. So. Thank you. But he yeah. wants but, to look forward. He doesn't want to look back. I know, I know. But Howie like, doesn't want to look But feel, I have a little facility here. If you mm -hmm. ever want to come and do stuff that I'm not in. Why don't we pitch normal-sized monsters? That'll be the sequel. <laughs> normal-sized monsters. I love that. Whatever that is, we'll figure it out. But we'll we got to work together. And I'd love, I would come to Glendale anytime and do, do your show. Thanks, and, Howie. Uh, it does mean a lot. I mean, we met a few years ago and it was just very strange. There's always strange things when where you... Where was that, Tim? At Abso, we just you rang us up out of nowhere because I'm a fan. And, and I was and just was trying like, to get. We have those experiences where it's very uh, surreal because, again, not to age everybody, but we grew up with you and uh, and respect you. No, you could say that in your career. And just I say, wanted to do a show. I was trying to do a show. Yeah. It, it was kind it was of fitting in the idea. same thing. It's still a good idea. You guys were doing. Um, and my mind is going blank now. What, what do you call the company where you do all the products? Uh, Cinco. Yeah. yeah. So they had done all the Cinco products. If you're a fan, mm -hmm. you got to look up that stuff. It's yeah. just great. 
And then I wanted to do a show, a network show, yeah. where we take these really funny, bad, obscure um, infomercials right. for not only Cinco, for shows that you were doing for right. the Christmas special and for all that, and sit them down in front of a real, uh, what do they call them, test audience? Yeah, focus group. Oh, yeah. Focus groups. Yeah, yeah. And have and see if and and we would uh, you guys would would head it up, but we'd right. have groups of comedians make new because yeah. there's only so much cinco, bad products, bad shows, bad ideas, yeah. and see who can convince a real group of people <laughs> to buy on and hear yeah. their comments about that. That would which, be it. Would be a challenge to find that to find the balance of like making it just believable enough where you're not people aren't going. I'm out of here, but. But even if somebody, if one person in that room goes, I'm fucking out of here, yeah. that's, that's, that's that's all so good. But to see these, what are you, what are you putting up? Oh, the Cinco phone? That's Ed. There's I love it. You were working revolution. with to watch real people, even if they hate it, have a real discussion. Uh, I can't, I don't know, a phone that doesn't receive. I don't know. Yeah, if I exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, no idea is ever fully dead, right? Until Hopefully somebody until at some network hears this or yeah. Netflix and they want to do it. I just think that there's... There is, you know, we're always being sold shit. And that's what life is. And we, I thought there's was, a whole Reddit page called, I think, not Tim and Eric. It's called Reddit slash not Tim and Eric. <laughs> and it's things that exist in life that could have easily been on our show, right? So there so life, you know, life is shit. That's sort of our model. Oh, it is. I've, no, I've we're seen surrounded it. by it. They it's sold I saw an infomercial too. for there's a golf club that you can piss in. Right. You've seen that, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you're out on the, right. on the links. And oh, you know, hold it right yeah, here. You pull that's off a great the, investment. That is really smart. <laughs> right. Well, that's, I was trying to find something that seems ridiculous. Not if you have a macro <laughs> penis like myself. It's, um, <laughs> it's hard to get in. Yeah. yeah. It's, why do you have to? Why do you have to wait for a network? Extremely thick. Where are we gonna do it? Like, well, this. he posted his stand up on YouTube. It's why? Basically, the same length. Mm -hmm. and same length. Describing and my penis. It's uh, this long. The top. The tapping you hear is uh, well, Tim bowling ball. showing them his Imagine penis. Imagine a bowling ball that you can pee in. It would Imagine work. if this is the size. There's three the holes in a bowling ball. There's more pee. <laughs> that would be good. It shouldn't just be for golf. We can, well, maybe there, of one can of them could be a poop shoot. There you so go. you can piss and shit. Hollow ball for your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like that uh, the uh, the shit. What was the shit thing where you can go yeah, urinal? The poop, tube. poop tube. It comes out. Oh, I My love. My said I can use the poop tube. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Right. Anyway, and you uh, you guys have been great. Is there what should we plug? Uh, Tim, you're on tour. No, no. Uh, I'm, okay. doing New York. I'm doing a show in New York actually, in uh, two shows in New York in uh, April. At the Bowery Ballroom and the uh, if you go to timheidecker.com, I'm whatever his dates music. are, and then office hours every Thursday we have our 200th show coming up. Uh, we have a lot. Yeah, it's just a it's a it's a blast every week to get together with these guys and basically do this in your garage. But you uh, in my garage, yeah, yeah. different mic, a little noisier. How far how far uh, do you guys live from his garage? Enough to get there on time, so that's, yeah, it's like <laughs> I, I leave early enough. I'm, yeah. Do you want to plug anything individually? Oh, sure. Uh, I'm opening for Tenacious D in September, so oh. tenaciousd.com. Check that out. What that's do you? Exciting. So you're opening? You do I'm a, a comedian DJ. too. I perform. DJ Does, Doug Pound. I, I'm a DJ comedian. I love that. And people hate me because I have my. They say, "Oh, I didn't bring my sound machine with me." That's what some guy said the other day <laughs> when I opened for. Yeah, you know, he came after me. He was bombing, so he was like, I "Oh, because you 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 lean on a prop. He leans yeah, on a. I lean on I get the jokes are so good right. during that. It's high anyway, I'm opening for them and uh, Office get Hours live. Tim, YouTube.com/slash Tim Heidecker. No, but yeah, don't you have your own website where they can see your dates where you're performing? Um, no. Where are you That's on uh, Twitter? Check me out yeah. at Instagram Doug Pound with two G's. I put a lot of funny stuff on there. Hopefully. Let yeah. them be the judge of that. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, say I, I post a lot of I, stuff. I, I, I wish I didn't other... say that. I, I put a lot of stuff there that <laughs> I, I hope really, people think is. You want to see me hysterical stuff that I... <laughs> and, you... and then uh, me, uh, I don't really perform live unless Mr. Heidecker and uh, Doug take me out, but I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Um, <laughs> so you're plugging behind the scenes? Behind the scenes. No, but like uh, Filling the Void. Uh, with but you guy. have your own YouTube channel? I have you... my own YouTube channel, uh, Vice News, Filling the Void. I'm working with uh, this guy named Ben Craw. Really proud of these videos. They're like half hour long. They're great. They're very things. funny, but also kind of educational. Yeah, like, I think you, yeah, I think you you dig them. So yeah. do you work? Do you work for Vice? Uh, right now, I'm working for Vice News. But actually, I'm working for um, the Eric Andre show. 
All right. Well, Doug, Doug is too, which you've been on. I know. Yeah. yeah so. I love Eric. So that's I'm th- week three of it, so it's a little chaotic. Yeah. That's, 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 right. that's right. why you couldn't get here. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. It took us an hour to get an excuse. <laughs> We're both editing on that show. Yeah. Okay. Right. Fun. You edit at home Crazy. or you at an office? Uh, doing it at home, home right now, just okay. remotely. All right. Well, you guys are great. Way to end on a yeah. very low note. Put it down there. <laughs> Is it, do you, have a, you guys are much more creative than I am. And we, should, have an we should shout out Staples for your uh, set. Uh, Staples Office Supplies. Yeah. For all the, for the desk and... Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I am the spokesperson. <laughs> Doesn't look like a lot of Staples stuff. Is no, 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 no. It is. I'm. A, you know, I'm a spokesperson for Staples in Canada. Really? Really? I am. Really? Oh, I thought that's why you were saying that. I, think. I don't oh. know. <laughs> I went for. I, actually, now that I'm looking at the desk, is more. Where is this desk from? Where do you get a desk like this? From the other room. Was it given to you? Yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> Everything's from free. I have not bought anything. It's amazing. I wish I had this. Space. I'm, we're going to talk. We're going to partner up on this space. I think. I, I hope so. We got to get him on the on office hours. We're, we're going to. Make it all happen. Yeah. Not right now. You're just picking, not right now. <laughs> I mean, we're not. We're gonna follow up. It's we're gonna have to. All, all the time, you, we do these things, and everybody's like, "This is, we can follow up. Yeah, nothing has to be decided." You gotta do it well, that's live. A, that's now. a no. This was a kick. No, no. That's, that's, yeah, that's a no from no. you. It was, it was ending. Not, a I to you on no, no, I said. Yeah, yeah. I've said four fucking times. I would love to be on the show. <laughs> and he's going to be. Your partner Thursday, said you, yeah. you'd love to come down, and you went, "No, let's work it we'll, out. We'll talk later." Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Yeah, I know what that means. Well, fuck it. It's gonna get thorny because he's got a lot of requests and demands. I know. No, I have nothing. I'm just kidding. I could have done it. But, uh, <laughs> Tim didn't want me on the show. It's a shame, Tim. <laughs> Bragging about. Well, we're just going to air this show. Yeah. We're going to air this, this on our like, show. This so. is it. Yeah. Oh, this is your show. This is it. Yeah. It's a cross yeah. You're our guest on this one. I, okay. Thanks for watching Office Hours. Everybody. I do have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> you so know, it's I'm weird to save it for the. No, show. The, there's nothing to say, and you realize that, you, and you feel free to get up at any time. The show is this podcast. Don't you don't have to hit it yet, Kyle? But this podcast is over. It's been over for. I, I always I'm not doing it 20 anymore? minutes what <laughs> what do you mean you're not doing it anymore or this particular episode is well we're, we're gonna well we, th- we're not gonna make any decisions here we're gonna talk about after this show whether there will be any <laughs> further you, episodes really yes and this is after the show this is the only d- the reason that it seems like it's still going is because Kyle hasn't played the theme music yet and don't Kyle but this is the you're winding things down as a podcast is that what you're saying? Or just so this episode? So we're on the series finale? Could, is this for real? The series finale. Wow. Cliffhanger. We could talk about wow. it. This is a cliffhanger. Are you don't, do you not enjoy doing it? I did up until today. Until these people, <laughs> these, these late, these tardy guests but, showing up Bye, Tim. <laughs> Hit it, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being serious. Anything you want to do, anything you want to use, no charge. Oh, 